Hello and welcome to part 7 of this platform and tutorial series. Um, the first thing we're going to do in this video is add in support for sideways moving platforms. Um, in the future I will add support for them to go up and down, but at the moment making them go up and keeping the player on them is a touch difficult with the system that I'm using, but uh, I'll figure it out, don't worry. Um, for now, create a C Sharp script called Platform, Moving Platform, whatever you like. Open it up. Um, and we're going to keep this very simple for the moment. We're just going to have a public float that keeps track of the speed. Set that to maybe 2 by default. And in the update method, we'll just, oops, we'll translate our object to the right by that speed value and of course we'll multiply by time dot delta time okay now mm, if we just add in a cube and we can call this platform and I'm going to create a little material for it and just assign that quickly and give it a different color maybe some sort of blue I make sure that it's in line with the ground, so just put the Z to zero and drag this out a little bit. And of course we also need to um, attach our platform script and set the layer to collisions. So now if we play the game um, this should move and we can drag the speed, uh, the speed value in the inspector here to change, well, its speed and direction. Um, so, at the moment, if we were to jump onto this, oops, I missed, um, it will just carry on without us and eventually we'll fall off. So, to change that, we need to go into the player physics, and we're going to keep track of what it is that we're standing on. So, to do that, we'll create a private transform, and we can call this platform and we also want to know, by way of a vector 3, um, what the position of the platform was last frame. So we're going to say platform position old. And we're going to create one more thing, another vector 3 um, delta platform position. Or pause, let's leave it at that. Um, so that's how much the platform's position has changed since the last frame. Now I just want to do a bit of um, tidying up here, so this whole block here, check collisions left and right, um, I want to be able to enclose that all into one line, so I'm going to say hashtag region, oops, region, um, I can just call this sideways collisions or horizontal collisions, whatever you prefer, and at the end, um, hashtag end region, and now we can just close it nicely like that, um, and I'm going to do the same thing with the um, vertical collisions, um, region, vertical collisions, okay, now in this vertical collisions block, um, over here we have this line, if physics.raycast, yada yada yada. Um, in here, we're going to say that the current platform is equal to hit.transform. So that's just saying that whatever we're standing on at the moment, that's our platform. And here we're going to say else, if we're not standing on anything, then uh, our platform is null. Okay, so we can just about close that up. One more thing that we need to do is over here, just where we've set the platform to hit .transform, we're going to say that the platform position old is equal to platform dot position. Now we can close it, and just above it, we're going to say if um, 
if we're standing on something, if we have a platform, then the delta position, so the change in position of the platform, is equal to the platform's current position, so just platform.position, and we're going to subtract from it the, um, the platform position old. So now we're also going to say that if we don't have a platform, then the delta platform position is equal to zero, so vector 3.0. Now, when we're applying our final transformation over here, we can say delta x plus delta platform position dot x. And that should all work. We're just going to Unity. And now jump onto this platform. We're now moving along with it. And we can change the speed. And uh, we stay on it. And we can jump. And in that case, we no longer move with the uh, with the platform. Um, so that's moving platforms for now. As I said in the beginning, can't go up or down yet, but uh, that's coming. Now I'm going to hide this platform. I'm done with that part, and uh, we're going to add in. The ability to respawn. So in the prefabs, you might, if you've been following along, have a saw blade. Um, oh, I don't want to change its scale, I want to change its position. And um, if you run into the sword blade, your player should die. Um, but currently, there's no means to get back into the game now. So I'm going to go into the project settings, into the input, and uh, add in another input, and call this respawn. And um, what I actually want to do in my case, of course you must choose what you want the input to be like for your game, but I want my jump to actually be the up button and for the alternative positive button I'll have W and for now I'm going to have respawn to be triggered um, when the space bar is pressed so what's handling the player spawning in the beginning is the game manager um, so we want to have a update method in uh, in the game manager and we want to spawn the player um, if the uh, if the respawn button is pressed so if input to get button down respawn Now, there is a problem with this, and that's just that if we walk along and press the respawn button, now we have an army of clones. Um, and that's not quite what we want. We want you to only be able to respawn if you're actually dead. So the way we're going to do this is um, we're going to keep track of the current player so we'll have a private transform, or oh, let's just make it a game object actually. Private game object, current player. And when the player is spawned, we're going to say current player is equal to, and we're going to take this instantiate code out of the camera.set target, and we're going to put it here. So the current player is equal to this. Um, and we're going to say camera dot set target current player dot transform. Okay, now we have a nice reference to the. Hold on, I actually think we can just delete that line there, um, or at least that bit of the line. Now we have a reference to the current player, 
and we can say if not current player which is the same as saying if the current player is equal to null then we can spawn the player and uh, one thing that I want to add in support for now is um, checkpoints so when when we call the spawn player method we're going to make it so that you have to pass in a vector 3 spawn location or spawn position um, and it will spawn it at this spawn position so in the beginning when we say spawn player we'll spawn the player just at vector3.0 and for now we'll do exactly the same here um, but later on we'll be able to change this to our checkpoint location so now oops that's wrong okay my bad I couldn't take that line out. I guess I put it there originally for a reason. Um, now, I'm mashing the respawn button, but I'm not respawning. And if I die, I can respawn. So that's working exactly how we want it. Now, we're going to disable the saw blade, and we're going to go into just some general fixes. So. A few things that aren't working quite how I want them to. For example, if you're standing still and you press down, um, you perform this stupid little slide animation. Um, whereas that should, of course, only work when you've got some sort of momentum going. Um, and the other thing is that when you're sliding, you can still jump, which is not feasible, of course. So let's go into the player controller and we're going to add in a private float and we can call this something like um, say initiate slide threshold and I want it so that you have to be walk uh, you have to be moving just over the walk speed to be able to um, to be able to slide so the walk speed is eight in my case so I'll set it to nine um, and now if we just find the input, yeah, here we have a comment saying slide input. We'll say if the current speed, but of course we want the absolute value of the current speed, mathf.absolute, um, because it, if you're moving left, then it could be negative. So if mathf.abs is, um, well, abs of current, current speed is greater than the threshold value, the initiate slide threshold, then we can slide. Otherwise we can't. And to rectify the jumping issue, um, let's just create a private bool stop sliding. Um, so how I want this to work is that if you're sliding and uh, you press spacebar for jump, which I've actually just changed to up or W, so don't get confused about that. Um, if you press up, then you'll get up as opposed to jumping. So in the jump input over here, I'll say if sliding, then stop sliding equals true else if all of this then you can jump as normal um, and in the slide logic over here we'll say if the current speed is less than 0.25 then you get up automatically or double straight line thing is or if stop sliding is true then get up and of course in here we want to say stop sliding is false um, otherwise we'd never be able to slide again so now let's have a look at this when we slide you can press up just to get up immediately or we can let it carry out as usual and 
What was the other thing that I changed? Um, yeah, if you're standing still, you can't slide. If you're walking, you still can't slide. But if you're running, then uh, you're very welcome to slide. So that is it for part seven. Um, please leave a comment saying what you'd like to see in part eight. Of course, um, platforms going up, something that will be added. Um, and yeah, until then, cheers.